United States, a couple have been arrested for allegedly killing a child they adopted from Russia in 2003. The seven-year-old boy died in hospital six months ago. An autopsy revealed Nathaniel had sustained over 80 external injuries. Michael and Nanette Craver, who claimed the child was injury-prone, now stand accused of first-degree murder. There has been a number of similar cases involving Russian children dying as a result of poor treatment by their American adoptive parents. Oh boy, this is now serious. The alleged child abuse and the alleged subsequent death of an adopted Russian boy, that's him right there, at the hands of his American parents. And the serious part about this is there's now a group of investigators straight from Russia taking a look at this case. Taking a look at this case and international adoptions as a whole, Mira Ribbon, who is an adoption expert. Thank you for joining us, uh, Ms. Ribbon. Um, your take about what has happened, what has allegedly happened in, in Pennsylvania, so far. Can you tell us what that is? I don't know much about the current case at all except what's been reported in the newspapers. Um, of course, my bigger concern is the number of cases of this sort more than just this one case. Okay, so we just the tip of the iceberg. So what you're saying is, what you're telling me, uh, the way I'm surmising this, is that this is something that's not exactly, unfortunately, an unusual story here in the United States. It's not an isolated case. Um, my research, I have come across um, more than a dozen reported cases, so we don't even know the total number. But there's been more than, a, for, there's been perhaps 15 or 16 reported cases of child abuse of um, Russian children adopted by American families. There's been 12 murder convictions based on those abuse cases. Uh, a couple of others were um, abuse that did not lead to the child's death. One case was an acquittal, um, and two or three are pending. So this is just the last in um, a series of, of very disturbing situations. Ms. Ribbon, um, when one thinks about international adoptions, specifically international adoptions, one might assume that there is a, a very lengthy and a, ve a very extensive vetting process. Uh, is that the case? And if there is an extensive uh, vetting process, how did incidents like these happen still? Because there isn't such a process. Um, when adoptions were um, under governmental um, control, under the auspices of social workers, there was some um, preparedness uh, programs for prospective adopters. Today, um, these international adoptions are handled by private, um, some are religious and uh, nonprofit adoption agencies or for profit adoption agencies, but regardless, they um, all depend upon placing children in order to stay afloat and keep their doors open. So they're not in a, the best interest of the child. There's some conflict there with the best interest of these agency operators, owners and operators and employees, whose livelihood depends on closing the deal and getting the child adopted. Therefore, there's a lacking in um, scrutinization in the home studies, in preparedness for these um, pre-adoptive parents, um, and there is absolutely no follow-up whatsoever, which was required by the Russian government, I believe in 2000, after they reopened adoptions, they had closed it for a while. Then they reopened, insisting on follow-ups um, I believe at six months, one year, and two years, but that does not happen in the United States. There is no follow-up. Okay, Ms. Ribbon, These we... children are... I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. I apologize for that. Uh, we don't have too much time, but let me ask you this question. You, you 
brought up the term best interests of these private, religious, and nonprofit organizations uh, in, in handling these adoption cases. Let's go down that a little bit deeper. What are we talking about when it comes to best interests? What potentially, what, what fires are, are potentially erupt? Uh, what problems come out? Because now the, the uh, responsibility of vetting has fallen on private, religious, and nonprofits. Well, as I said, they're businesses. Um, they're in business. They're concerned about their bottom line. So it's in their best interest, as I said, to see these adoptions take place. Um, they're not going to be very likely to stop them. But they're not making much attempt either. I mean, the case of Matthew Mancusco, who adopted Masha Allen, um, is a classic case. They did no home study whatsoever or they would have found out that this single man didn't even have a room, let alone a bed, for this child. He adopted her planning on putting her into his bed from day one. And she was waiting for somebody to come and check on her. Um, and the only reason she was discovered and, and saved from that situation was because of an FBI sting into the um, pornography he was putting online, the photos of her, the images of her wow. that he was distributing online because there, there was no follow-up from the agency who allowed her to be adopted into this situation.